Buchanan here. Hello. Trying something new. New frames. Hi. Uh, trying to get this lighting correct. Uh, so that should be okay. Uh, let us pray. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. God bless each and every one of you. I pray that you have a wonderful, marvelous Saturday. Uh, get your Bibles out, and let's go to uh, Philippians 1 through 12. It's talking about uh, Timothy and uh, Paul. Paul and Timothy, bond servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi with the bishops and deacons. Bishops and deacons. Verse 2, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus. Thankfulness and prayer. 3, I thank God for, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun, a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Verse 7, just as it is right for me to thank this of you all, because I have you in my heart, in as much as both in my chain, in as much as both in my chains, and in the defense, he's in jail. Handcuffs and confirmation of the gospel, and all our partakers with me of grace. For God is my witness. How greatly I long for you all with the affection of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and our discernment, that you may approve the things that are excellent, and that you may be sincere and without offense to the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Verse 12, and we get ready to end. We're talking about Christ being preached. But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually been locked up, brought about an epiphany, a big old thought, a change of life, a change of thought, a change of thinking, correcting my wrong ways wanting to change them and give them to God. But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. And we ended there. And, uh, hmm, Lord Jesus, let me talk about, keep it on me for a minute, let me talk about me. Uh, I understand that. I understand it. I've been to jail. Ooh, ain't no shame in my game. I've been to jail, and I understand what Paul's talking about. When you're in chains and stuff like that, Woo, Lord Jesus. <laughs> yeah, when, you, when they handcuff you, ooh, Lord Jesus. You've been handcuffed a couple of times. When they handcuff you, I ain't lying. You're talking about, mm, at the time when I got locked up, I had been drinking a couple of times. I got locked up sober, too, but a couple of times when I was locked up, I'm not lying. You talk about a sober thought. <laughs> you heard Reverend start realizing when they handcuff you. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> My freedom is getting ready to be taken from me. Oh, Lord Jesus, because I knew God all my life. I was always raised in the church, and I've been around people that talk God. So I immediately I knew, oh, Lord Jesus, <laughs> is this real? <laughs> Am I tripping? It was real. <laughs> they locked me up and they put you in that cell. And you in a cell where you don't know who you in the cell with. Yeah, you in there with a lot of women. But you bypass some men when you in holdover. Hello. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So I know what Paul's speaking of when he's talking about being changed. But what is powerful, powerful to me and what I would like to talk about is when when he says, but I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. And all my trials and tribulations, I can say in my life, that it turned out for good. I'm not where I would like to be, and I'm quite sure I'm not where God really wants me to be. 
But I can say that I can look back over my life and I can say, woo, being locked up, yes. It took a couple of it took a couple of lock up. I need to stop. But it took a couple of lock up before, hey, uh, I don't think you need to drink and I don't think you need to drag. And uh, hey, let's be truthful. And getting caught. Yeah, honey. You really don't need to be doing that, you know. But I, I counted out joy. Like he said. If, if Paul said, if I wouldn't have been locked up and, and I wouldn't have sat in jail, I wouldn't have been able to tell this story and he would not have been able to further the gospel because how can you, how can you try to change somebody's life or tell somebody about something that you don't know about? How am I going to talk to you about jail, being incarcerated, being locked up, being uh, <laughs> having a loss of freedom, <laughs> being in jail? <laughs> And uh, with no bail. <laughs> One time they gave me bail. <laughs> they gave me bail and scared me. <laughs> they said $500, but they was messing with me. They said $500. I said, oh, Lord. I couldn't think of no bad telephone number, so hello. But if it had not been, if it had not been for the jail, for the incarceration, for correction, for the police officers, female police officers with the pink handcuffs, all of them, and the judge, if it had not been for that, all of that in God's will, if it had not been for that, I wouldn't be here in front of you today. I would probably still be locked up or I would be dead because I was going on that path. So I don't want to talk about something I don't know about. I don't really know how to do that, you know. But I can identify with <laughs> the majority of this Bible. Everything in this Bible, I know what Paul felt like. I know what Jeremiah felt like. I know what Job. I've had my, my Job moments. I've had those moments in my life. Some of them I'm still going through now. But I know, I know, I know what it's like to be locked up. And I know what he's talking about. If, if having trials and having tribulations. And when you're in the trials and the tribulations, you're sitting there wondering like, Oh, Lord, what's, what you doing? What did I do wrong? Why me, Lord? Why? Why not that person? Why me? And then after the rain and the storm and the thunder and the trials and the tribulations and the dark clouds, all of a sudden you, the rainbow comes. And it's like, oh, wow, I went through all of that. The car being wrecked, the car being stolen, this, ow, oh, because God wanted me to see that you didn't need that car anymore. I got something better for you. You don't even have to buy you a car. Your son's going to buy you a car. Hello, yes, mm. that's how good my God is. So don't don't get disturbed, discouraged. Don't get discouraged. <laughs> don't get discouraged. Be not dismayed, for joy comes in the morning. And with that, I'm gonna say goodbye because I don't want to be long-winded. Because God is sweet, sweet and wonderful to be served. God bless you all. Have a wonderful, marvelous, fantastic day. <laughs>